Hi, my name is Dr. Josh Luke, and I want to thank each of you meeting planners for taking just a few minutes to allow me to introduce myself. And it's my hope that you would hire me to come speak for your group. The top feedback that I get when I come to speak is that I'm a great storyteller that makes people laugh, but also makes them think by sharing those life experiences. And I leave audiences with several simple ways that they can save thousands on healthcare. So when you talk about three takeaways from my presentation, they are all things that are rooted here in this book that Forbes Books printed after I was a hospital CEO for 10 years. The book is called Health Wealth, and when I present, each of the attendees, up to 250, get a free copy of this book. But here's the three takeaways you can expect when you come to see me speak. First of all, you can expect that as an individual, you're going to get three to five very simple takeaways on how you can save thousands on healthcare spending because every American spends too much on healthcare, right? I talk about becoming an EHC. What is an EHC? It's an engaged healthcare consumer. How do you become an engaged healthcare consumer? Well, you shop for houses, don't you, when you're buying a home? You shop for cars when you're buying a car. Why don't you shop for healthcare in America? The simple reason is because there's six words that led us to believe that we don't need to shop, that it's paid for, and those words are, your insurance will pay for it. So becoming an EHC is critical because we've been misled by this myth of our insurance paying for it. So the first takeaway that the audience will get is that there are three to five steps that they can plug in tomorrow to save thousands. I'm going to give you just one example, and I call it local medical tourism. We hear medical tourism, we think, oh, we need to fly to India or Costa Rica to get a procedure, which you can do and you can save a lot on, but Americans haven't been willing to do that. Local medical tourism is when you drive just a few more miles to save thousands, you can save up to 60% on a $10,000 procedure. That's $6,000 to you as a consumer. The average distance an American has to drive to find that center of excellence that's within their insurance's narrow network is only 35 miles. But to date, we have never taken the time to identify where that center is because we are always misled to believe that our insurance will pay for it. So I'll give you a few more examples just like that that are very simple on how you can save thousands. Number two, the second takeaway, would be that the employer is also going to save thousands when they can equip each of their employees to become engaged healthcare consumers. So when that employee took that initiative to drive a few extra miles. The employee might have saved $6,000, but oftentimes the employer can save $50,000. We'll talk about other concepts like providing and paying for a DNA test for each employee after one year on the job as a retention incentive, because DNA testing and getting your, your genetic makeup is a critical piece to having a preventative and personalized medicine plan. So the third takeaway would be really simple. Everybody's going to have a lot of turnkey ways to live a healthier lifestyle. So what we're accomplishing with those three takeaways is we're not only going to live healthier and be healthier, but we're going to save thousands as is our employer. So it's awesome stuff. It works for just about any audience. And I want to share two really quick stories with you so I can uh, share with you kind of what my delivery feels like. And the first is the career change that I experienced. My dream in college was to work in sports marketing. I had two older brothers that were professional athletes, and that's a lot of pressure for a high school kid, right? But I realized at a young age that God hadn't quite blessed me in the same manner to be a professional athlete. So I set my sights on working in sports marketing, the nearest thing, right? And I was doing that just a year out of graduate school. I had worked for every major professional sports organization in some way, shape, or form. And in 1998, I found myself on a private jet to New York with Mark McGuire. He'd just broken the national home run record for Major League Baseball. My wife of just three days joined me on that private jet. Never thought in a million years I'd be on a private jet. Here I am three days after I got married, on a private jet with the most famous athlete in the world for a few months there. He'd just broken this record. We took him on a media tour of the Today Show, on the David Letterman Show. If you remember the Rosie O'Donnell Show, we took him to Time Magazine to pitch him as the man of the year that year. And it was a whirlwind trip. And within 24 hours, we were back on that private jet 
heading back to Southern California where we're from. I'd been married four days now. I was 26 years old and I remember looking across at my wife going, this is so amazing. Can you believe it? We're living the dream. But you know what's been weighing on my mind the last couple of weeks? That my grandmother is aging and she's ill. And every time I talk to her, she complains that she can't get basic access to health care. Here I am. I just got married. I'm on the trip of a lifetime. But all I can think about is my grandmother, who I was always close to, and how she can't get basic access to health care. That didn't make much sense to me, because my grandmother and her husband worked hard for years to contribute. I thought it was only fair that they would have access to basic care. So on that private jet, I looked across at my wife for four days now and said, Honey, I'm not sure what I want to do, but can I have your support? in changing careers. I want to do something that has more of a social mission where I can have more of a purpose in life. And I'm not sure what that is yet, but in the next few months I got my answer because one of my students approached me as I was teaching at the university and said, Hey, Dr. Luke, I have heard uh, you say that you want a career change and I've heard you talk about your frustration over your grandmother's care. And we have an opportunity at my healthcare facility to be trained for someone to be trained as a administrator in training for healthcare. And so I jumped down that opportunity. And the next thing you know, I had given up my career dream in sports marketing and I became a healthcare administrator. I was about um, 27, 28 years old at the time. And by the age of 32, I became a hospital CEO. My first job in a hospital was as its CEO. And boy, is there a story to go with that. That's called learning on the job, isn't it? So that's one of my first stories that really I share in every presentation to really lay the groundwork for the fact that I've had this exciting life with this very diverse work background. But the second story I want to share with you really exemplifies one of those examples that we talked about on saving thousands on healthcare. So I want you to imagine it is your 16 year old daughter's birthday. And she got her driver's license first thing in the morning. We got the insurance all taken care of. Uh, we, she went online and researched for months the car she wanted. And we saved and she saved and we decided we'd split it with her. And so we jump in the car. Dad's driving. Uh, mom's sitting shotgun. Daughter in the back. So excited. We drive down the street and we come to that stoplight at Auto Center Drive. And we're sitting there so excited. Daughter rolls down the window in the back and says, Daddy, Daddy, there it is, the exact car I want out the window to the left. The exact color, the exact feature. She could even hear the radio station playing her favorite song, right? And in the window, in big red and yellow numbers, it said $16,000. And just then, the wife sitting shotgun says, Hey, look, there it is on the right side of the street as well. The same exact car. Same color, same features, same radio station with the same exact song playing. But in the window, the sticker in big red and yellow said $42,000, a 60% increase. So here's the question of the minute for the dads. Which way are you going to turn? Because most dads I know would turn left and pretend like they didn't hear mom say, oh, it's on the other side of the street because it was priced 60% higher. Well, if the insurance is paying for it, you might have turned right. Correct? But since it's not your money, since it is your money now, you're going to turn to the left. Now, I want you to think about health care. I want you to think about the last 20 years when you personally, individually, have been faced with a situation where you needed to have a test done or a procedure or surgery or have a baby and you had a choice between hospitals, doctors, and facilities. Did you turn left or did you turn right? Did you shop? Did you learn? Did you actually truly understand the differences between the left side of the street and the right? Because oftentimes in healthcare, the big shiny building on the right actually has a lower quality rating than the, the facility on the left. And you want to know a little secret? The same doctor would operate on you or deliver your baby at either facility, but one side of the street is 60% less. And the last little tidbit I will leave your audience, and this is a great one. When you as an individual become an EHC, an engaged healthcare consumer, and you choose the hospital that's 60% less, which we call a center of excellence, you can actually go to your employer, your HR director or owner and say, hey, if I do go to that hospital, will you actually pay my co-payment for me, my thousand dollars, my 2,500, my five grand? You'd be amazed at how many times they'll say yes. Do you know why? Because even after they pay your $5,000 co-share, they're going to save 30 40 or $50,000 on many surgeries. And that's meaningful. And those are meaningful dollars. So I just want to close by sharing each time I present, I try to wear the color purple 
Because what I haven't shared with you is in 2010, the same year that Obamacare passed, uh, my mother was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. And after making a career change to healthcare because of the motivation of my grandmother, I remember opening a box one day with the first three copies of the first book I wrote. And I looked across at my wife and I said, I am so proud of this accomplishment. I just want to take one of these copies up to my mom and dad's house and thank them for always instilling in me just that drive to get an education and to follow my dreams. And my wife looked back to me and shared with me, um, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, with tears in her eyes, but she said, your mom can't read anymore. And I didn't know that and I was convicted. So I always wear purple and advocate for Alzheimer's disease because I support Alzheimer's disease and take a portion of proceeds from every appearance I make and donate it to Alzheimer's. So hopefully this has given you a little taste of what you can expect from me when I present to your group. I will leave them feeling great and I will leave them with three or four tactics that can help them save thousands overnight. Thanks so much and I look forward to speaking with you.